Hello everybody! Last October we had the opportunity and we spent one month in Italy. More precisely in a small medieval town called Badolato, all the way in the south in Calabria. And one question that often arises is how much money digital nomads actually spend. So to answer this, how much money we needed for one month in Italy, I kept track of all our expenses and all our costs. Because I believe it would be probably interesting for a few of you. So let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do similar videos of our budget for other destinations. So at the moment we are in Brazil, so this is not Italy anymore, so I hope it's not too loud because it's quite a party out there. So in terms of cost, I only included travel related costs. We went there by car, but costs that I usually pay day to day, like my car insurance, I did not include in this. So one of the biggest costs obviously was to get there. We drove with our car from Austria to Badulato and in total it was more or less 16 hours of driving time. On the way down south we made one stop in Umbria. Actually we thought it was the Tuscany but we learned that we were literally one hill outside of the Tuscany. But that did not matter because the views were still spectacular and it was a very nice place. And I really enjoyed waking up to this view in the morning and we kind of regretted that we did not spend another day. For this place, for both of us together, we paid 72 euros, including breakfast. On the Italian highway you have to pay quite an expensive toll, so the first part of the journey from Austria to Tuscany, or Umbria in that case, cost us 44 euros and 80 cent, and the second part to go south on the second day was 28 euros and 20 cents, because just after Rome the toll ends. And we reached our destination, Badulato, at some time in the evening. So Badulato is a small medieval town overlooking the ocean. It's built on a little hill and it's uh, surrounded by countryside and there's more olive trees than you could possibly count. We booked an apartment through Airbnb for 29 nights. The owners were very friendly and we also had a very nice welcome with the girls who showed us the apartment. And the apartment was actually very pretty and quite functional and really equipped with everything we need for a longer stay, which is not always the case. So there was a functional kitchen with all the tools you need and there was also even a washing machine. And there were many stairs. So downstairs there was our master bedroom with the bathroom and the washing machine. On the first floor we had a living room with a very nice big table that we used as an office desk and a kitchen. And if you went up one more staircase, then you came to this fantastic terrace with this panoramic view that we really, really, really enjoyed. We thought it was very beautiful there. And a big plus for us was the internet. It's not always nice to have reliable internet. And we were a little bit worried how it will be in an old town like this. But actually the internet was very stable and had a pretty decent speed. So we were very happy with our choice of this apartment. So our stay in this apartment cost us 612 euros in total. But of course we did not spend the entire time in the apartment. So obviously since we were there with the car, we just randomly drove around and explored nearby cities. And we found our favorite beach in the next village called Santa Catarina. And since it was October and off season, we basically had kilometers of beach to ourselves. And the nice thing was that the parking there was also for free, so these trips did not cost us any money at all. Actually, now that I mention it, I think I never paid for parking anywhere in Italy, not even the cities that we visited later. So one day we visited the giants of Sila. These are huge trees in the Sila National Park. And we were the only visitors, and it was a really humbling experience to be able to walk among these huge trees all by ourselves. We also visited the famous towns of Tropea and Schilla. I think you pronounce it Schilla. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Both are ancient cities built on cliffs overlooking the ocean. Out of the two, I like Schilla better because I felt it's uh, more authentic and I would say quieter. And Tropea was full of tourists and had the charm of a whole polished tourist town, if you know what I mean. We also visited Capo Vaticano near Tropea, but unfortunately we arrived quite late and we did not have the time to take the trail down to the ocean. We also visited the, now it's difficult, Scolatium Park. There are some ancient ruins in the middle of the most beautiful olive garden patch I've ever seen in my life, so we thought it was worth the trip. 
And our host introduced us to the local tour guide, who was kind enough to took us to the olive patch of a friend and show us how the harvest worked, and he even took us to the olive mill and showed us around. He also explained us the whole process and it was very fascinating for us and it was probably the best thing we did on this entire trip. And then it was already time to head home and on the way home we took a few more breaks. On the first day we drove to Pompeii and visited the ruins there. In my opinion this is really an outstanding experience. If you've never been there you should definitely put it on your bucket list. And I have been there before, my husband as well, but both of us have been dying to go back because it's uh, just too big to explore in one day and it's very 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 nice. We can only recommend going to Pompeii. And to save time we chose a hotel that was right next to the archaeological park, so right next to the entrance and it also had free parking included, which is a thing you absolutely want to have when you go visit Pompeii because there's really not much parking space around. So the overnight stay with breakfast for both of us together was 95 euros and 20 cents. And the next day we headed to the Tuscany, to San Gimignano, and on the way there we spent 27 euros and 50 cents in toll. We stayed for two nights in a rustic fattoria, just one hill outside of San Gimignano, and in total this cost us 225 euros and 20 cents, including breakfast and parking. And the next day we visited Siena and San Gimignano, Siena did not impress me that much, there were just too many tourists there for my liking and I saw the line in front of the dome and I was immediately like, we're out of here, I'm not gonna stand in line there, forget it. <laughs> so afterwards we went to San Gimignano, which felt a little bit nicer to me because it's more smaller, there were still tons of tourists, but unfortunately the rain just started to pour down so that the sightseeing was uh, very very short. And on the next day we drove back to Austria and the toll there was 27 euros and 20 cents. That was kind of the itinerary and the things that we did in this one month in Italy, but obviously there were a few more costs. So one large amount was obviously gasoline, since we drove a lot. We spent a total of 291 euros and 6 cents in diesel. I'm not sure how many kilometers we drove, but my car usually needs around 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So I guess it was around 6,500 kilometers in total. And the price per liter in Italy at that time was around 1.6 euros per liter. So now let's talk about the good things in life and in my opinion that's food. So we went out to eat 13 times and we spent 447 euros and 5 cents on that. If you break it down that is about 35 euros per meal for us as a couple which I think is okay. And this included a lot of seafood and the occasional bottle of wine or two, probably. So if you are more on dime, you can definitely do it cheaper. And since we only went out to eat 13 times, obviously we did a lot of cooking at home and we spent 348 euros and 26 cents on groceries. But honestly, we would have liked to spend a little bit more food, especially on restaurants. It was off season, so many of them were closed. And in the beginning we were very frustrated because we just could not find any restaurants that were open. On Google Maps they always said they were open and then you drive there and they're closed. And I think it took us one week to find one restaurant that was open in the area. So this was a little bit frustrating there. Okay, so let's sum up. For accommodation, which includes Airbnb and all the hotels in the Tuscany, in Umbria and in Pompeii, we spent 1,004 euros and 30 cents. On eating out, we spent 477.05, groceries 348.28, on fun, like all the entrances of all the places we visited, was 52 euros in total. In toll, on the autobahn, we paid 128 euros and 20 cents, and in gasoline, we spent 291 euros and 6 cents. So in total, I hope I count correctly, otherwise this will be embarrassing. It was 2,300 euros and 89 cents in total, which equals about 1,150 euros and 45 cents per person. So I think we did good. We definitely stayed within our budget. So overall, we really enjoyed working in Badulato. We were a little bit unfortunate with the weather because at some point there was like a rain storm 
coming and it was raining very bad for a week or two and we were also a little bit frustrated that everything was closed so for example in Badulato there was not a single restaurant open so without a car you would really starve there well not really starve there because right next to the apartment there is one small mini market from a nice lady called Anna which provides you with the basics but other than that there's not too much happening there so if you go there you would really need a car or go there in the high season when things are actually open. Just judging from the closed restaurants that were there in the area, it must be very, very nice in the summer. So I think overall Badulato is a very nice destination for digital nomads because it's very quiet, it's very relaxing and it's also very affordable. But at the end, I think we got a lot of value for our money. So we were very happy with our month in Italy. So. Let me know if you want me to sum up the costs for other destinations. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!